Let's look at an introduction to simple linear regression. Regression analysis explores the relationship between a quantitative response variable and one or more explanatory variables. If there's only one explanatory variable, it's called simple linear regression, and if there's more than one explanatory variable, we call that multiple regression. Let's look at an example. Can the density of Australian timber be used to predict its Janka hardness? Janka hardness is a somewhat difficult variable to measure that involves the force required to push a ball bearing into a piece of wood. And density, on the other hand, is an easier variable to measure. So if we can establish a relationship between these variables, maybe we can use the easy-to-measure variable of density to help us predict the hard-to-measure variable of hardness. There are 36 observations in the data set, but only four are listed here to make it a little bit easier to see. If we are using one variable to predict the other, we call the variable that we are predicting the y. So we're going to call the Janka hardness our y variable, and the variable we are using to predict it is our x variable. So I'm going to call density the x variable. I'm going to call the x variable the explanatory variable and the y variable the response variable. Some places might refer to the x variable as the independent variable and the y variable as the dependent variable, but I prefer to use the terms explanatory and response. So the data set consists of 36 xy pairs. So this here is a pair of measurements on the same type of tree. We have our x1 y1 pair there, and over here this is our x4, y4 pair, and there's 36 observations in total. The first thing we should do is plot out our data to see what we're working with. And here we have our density as our x variable and the hardness as our y variable. And we do see a pretty clear relationship between the two of them. And the question is, can we use a known value of density, our explanatory variable x, to help us predict the hardness, a response variable y. And many times we attempt to do so by fitting a well-fitting line through those points, and then using that line for prediction. There are many questions though, like how do we come up with a good fitting line, and is a line a reasonable summary of the relationship between the variables, and is the relationship strong enough such that we can use it for prediction? There's a lot of questions left unanswered right now, but we'll try and answer a few of them as we go along. Let's look at another example here. Is there a relationship between scores on the empathic concern scale and pain-related brain activity? Researchers measured this on 16 females. The females answered some questions and were given a score on the empathic concern scale, and then they watched as their partner had a painful stimulus applied, and then they had activity in the pain-related brain centers measured. This was done for 16 females, and the results are in the next scatter plot. Here's our scatter plot, and I am calling the empathic concern scale score the X variable and the activation level in the pain centers of the brain, the Y variable, the X is an easy-to-measure variable that was found by having the women answer a few questions, but the Y variable here required an MRI, so that was a difficult-to-measure variable. Now, we might want to use score on the empathic concern scale to help us predict this activation level. But we don't usually want to predict someone's activation level in the pain centers of the brain. That's not really the main question of interest here. The main question of interest is simply, is there strong evidence of a relationship between the explanatory variable x and the response variable y? So here we might ask ourselves, is there strong evidence that there is a real effect? Is it unlikely to see a pattern like this just due to chance alone? And we might also want to simply give a measure of the strength of the relationship. So in a situation like this, we might simply be interested in some measure of the strength of the relationship between X and Y, such as the correlation. But we could also use it for prediction if we so desired. We are going to assume a linear relationship between Y and X. Now this isn't always the case, but it's a simple relationship and it's an important one for us. So we are going to assume at first that we have a linear relationship between y and x. 
Now, I would read this as saying the true mean of y for a given value of x is equal to this line. And we might see that written another way as the expectation of y for a given value of x, that that's equal to this beta naught plus beta 1 times x. We're assuming that this is the true relationship, beta naught being the y-intercept and beta 1 being the slope. Here I have a different data set plotted out, and what I have plotted in in the line is this true relationship between y and x. And what this model is saying is that if we knew the value of x, let's say our value of x was right here, then the theoretical mean of y at that point falls right on that line. And if the value of x is over here, say, then the theoretical mean of y for that value of x falls right on that line. But the actual observed values of y won't fall precisely on that line because there is some variability involved. So the observed values of y vary about the line. And we account for that variability in the y's about the true line with this epsilon value, which is a random error component. That epsilon at this point simply represents the fact that the y values will vary about the line, and they do not fall precisely on the line. In the future, to do some statistical inference, we will have to make some assumptions about the distribution of that random error component. But for now, it is simply just a random error component representing the fact that our y values do not fall precisely on the line. Beta naught and beta 1 are parameters and they are going to be typically unknown values. We do not know their value, and so we're going to want to estimate them. And so we will be using sample data to obtain the estimated regression line. Here, beta naught hat and beta one hat are sample statistics that estimate the parameters beta naught and beta one. Y hat is representing the predicted value of Y for a given value of X. And I don't need an epsilon term over here because my predicted values of y will fall precisely on this line. And the next question is, what are we going to use as beta naught hat and beta 1 hat? How are we going to estimate the true parameter values beta naught and beta 1? We usually use the method of least squares to estimate the parameters beta naught and beta 1. Least squares is a very common approach that we use, and I look at that in more detail in another video.